Who do you have to trade for in fantasy football and who needs to get off your roster right now? We'll go through all of that in this week's episode of the Fantasy Football Trade Desk. Each week, I'll give you my top fantasy football trade recommend recommendations with the one goal being to maximize the value of our players and to get the best weekly return in our lineup week in and week out. Some of the advice I give will be for immediate returns, and some of it will be for players I think can help us down the line. Um, if you do want my full weekly uh, trade recommendations, you can click the link below, and that will take you to the written article of the Trade Desk, which has even more buy, sell, hold recommendations. So you can check that out every single week. We'll start with the bad news and go over the players I am selling for this week. We're going to differentiate between players that I need to get off my roster and players that I'm just exploring the market on. But the first player I'm selling uh, is Chicago running Bears running back DeAndre Swift. Now, DeAndre Swift is a straight sell for me. Um, I was wrong about the Bears offense. I was wrong about DeAndre Swift. I thought he would have a huge week last week. But through three weeks, Swift is averaging just 5.5 fantasy points per game uh, in half PPR formats that makes him running back 42. Uh, he had been dominating the rush attempts until Roshan Johnson came back in week number three uh, and Swift played on just 52% of the snaps and took just 46% of the carries for the Bears offense. With Khalil Herbert also getting some rush shares in as well, this is a muddled mess in the backfield. And this Bears offense looks like it really is struggling to find an identity under new offensive coordinator Shane Waldron. Now maybe that gets better with Keenan Allen uh, back in the fold, but Shane Waldron had a confusing offense with the Seahawks before, and so I really don't have confidence that he's going to turn this Bears offense around. They played a Colts defense that gave up 475 rushing yards in two games, um, and they weren't really able to move the ball on the ground at all and had to throw the ball over 50 times last week. That doesn't instill confidence in me that this Bears rushing offense can get going. And now that there are three guys in the backfield that they're splitting carries with, I think we have to move on from DeAndre Swift. The schedule sets up pretty nice in the coming weeks. So if you want to wait for another good game or for, for a good game in order to move him, you can do that. However, in Yahoo leagues this week, DeAndre Swift was traded straight up for Garrett Wilson. That is not a lie. And he was traded straight up for Terry McLaurin twice. Uh, he was also traded with Mark Andrews for Travis Kelsey. So there are currently people who still believe in DeAndre Swift. So it's worth seeing if one of those people is in your league and you can make a trade to get him onto somebody else's team right now. The other type of sell recommendation is when we run a process on a player, which my friends in finance assure me is a very real term. And that's where when we're exploring what the market is for a player to see how inflated the value is and if it makes sense to trade that player away right now. So the player we're gonna be running a process on right now is Carolina Panthers running back Chuba Hubbard. Um, now, people are really high on the Panthers offense after seeing what Andy Dalton did with them for one game. Um, Hubbard exploded for 25.5 fantasy points and half PPR scoring in that game, and that has caused this renewed optimism. However, I think there are some causes for concern with Chuba Hubbard going forward. For starters, Miles Sanders took all of the rushes inside the five-yard line in that game. Um, he also played on 100% of the long down and distance snaps and on 100% of the snaps in the two-minute drill. So Hubbard is already losing some red zone carries, and pass da passing down carries to Miles Sanders. And that doesn't even take into account that the Panthers' second round uh, pick, Jonathan Brooks, is eligible to come off the IR in week five. Now, Brooks won't necessarily come off the IL and immediately be the lead back in that backfield, but considering Hubbard is already losing some work to Miles Sanders, if you add in the second round pick, Jonathan Brooks, it's going to make this a little bit of a muddled backfield, and I do expect Brooks to take over the share, the lead share in that backfield as the weeks go on. Also, how often are the Panthers really going to have this kind of game script? Um, and considering Sanders, Miles Sanders was playing on the passing downs, that could mean less work if the Panthers get behind in games coming up. So I really think that this is an opportunity to see what you can ex to explore what you could get for Chuba Hubbard before it becomes clear that his value has reached its peak. Uh, before we get to the players I'm buying, make sure to pause this video, comment below, let me know which players you're looking to trade for, or ask me any fantasy football questions and I'll answer those as the week goes on. Like with our sells, we're going to have two kind of buys here. And the first type is where we buy a call on a player, which is when we try to make a small deal for a player that doesn't have tremendous value now, but we think will have really strong value in the weeks to come. So the player we're going to buy a call on this week is Tampa Bay Bucks running back Bucky Irving. 
Now, I know that his fantasy value is going up a little bit since Todd Bowles came out and said that the Bucks need to get Bucky Irving more carries. However, just this week in Yahoo Leagues, Bucky Irving was traded straight up. Uh, for Nick Chubb and straight up for Mike Gusecki. So that fantasy value hasn't translated into all leagues, so it's still time to see if you can get Bucky Irving at a good cost. Um, Irving only played on 32% of the snaps for the Bucks last week, so that may depress his value a little bit. Uh, Rashad White is going to be really involved in the passing game, and since the Bucks were in a trailing game script, that type of snap share makes some sense to me. But Bucky Irving did handle 56% of the carries last week, which is the first time that he had more carries than Rashad White. And I think that's going to continue because Irving has been the better back. Through three games this year, uh, Irving is averaging 6.2 yards per carry on his 25 carries, and White is averaging 2.1 yards per carry on his 31 rushes. We've seen White be a really inefficient rusher for a couple of years now, so it shouldn't surprise us that Bucky Irving is better as a runner. Um, White is never going to be fully phased out of the offense. He's too good of a receiver out of the backfield. And White currently is handling the short yardage work and the red zone work. However, if Irving continues to take some of those snaps away and we get him as the lead rusher and the red zone option, then I think he is going to be a flex worthy player pretty much every week and will have RB2 value in weeks where the Bucks set up to be in a positive game script and they can control the ball on the ground and not have to throw so much with Rashad White. So I think now is the time to try to get Bucky Irving on your teams. The last buy recommendation is when we buy the dip on a player and try to get take advantage of their value when it's at its lowest. And so this week, we're buying the dip on New York Jets wide receiver Garrett Wilson. Through three weeks, Wilson is averaging 9.7 points per game, which makes him the wide receiver 34 in half PPR formats. Uh, now, we all know that Garrett Wilson is really good, but there are some concerns about how run heavy the Jets offense is and how much Aaron Rodgers likes to throw the ball to Alan Lazard. Uh, but the role here is really nice for Wilson. He leads the team with a 97% route participation rate uh, and a 29% target share. However, he has the lowest catchable target rate among the Jets receivers. And part of that is because defenses are double and triple covering him because the Jets don't really have other options to take the focus away from Wilson. However, where we're optimistic is that Mike Williams continues to play more snaps for the Jets as he gets healthier. When Mike Williams becomes the Mike Williams we've seen in the past, he's going to attract some defensive attention away from Garrett Wilson, which will make it harder for defenses to run so much coverage Wilson's way. And then Garrett Wilson and Aaron Rodgers should continue to get on the same page as they play more games together. And so that should enable people, or should enable Wilson, sorry, to have much better fantasy production as the weeks go on. Now, I know that's not really a bold call, but in Yahoo Leagues this week, uh, Wilson was traded straight up for Zach Charbonnet. He was traded straight up for T. Higgins. Um, he was traded in a package for, of, for DeAndre Swift and Quinton Johnson. So there are people who are panicking about Garrett Wilson and trading him away way below his value. So it's worth checking to see if there are owners like that in your league, and it's time to buy the dip on Garrett Wilson because he is still a locked-in wide receiver one for me and probably going to finish as maybe a top six, seven, eight wide receiver at the end of the season. So I really want shares of Garrett Wilson on my team. That's going to do it for us this week on the Fantasy Football Trade Desk. As a reminder, you can click the link below to read my full article and get all of my fantasy football trade recommendations. You can like and subscribe to get this video every single week as, long, as, as well as all of our fantasy football and regular football content over at NBC Sports. Happy trading this week in fantasy football.